Shannon, do you agree with Von Miller? I do. And Skip, before he wrote this piece, I talked to Von last week. You did. My phone rings, mm. and I'm looking at it. I don't recognize the number. So you know what I do, Skip. I uh, let it ring. Yep. <laughs> Text message comes in. Oh, it's Vaughn. Oh, okay. Call you back. What's on your mind, bro? He's like, Unc, I want to say something. He said, I need to say something, but I want to make sure I don't ramble, I don't babble, and people get the message I'm trying to convey. I said, well, Vaughn, sit down. Think about how you want to say it and just speak from your heart. I said, it, go, it resonates with people more if you can speak from personal experience, things that you've experienced, things that you've seen, um, and, and, just, and just, let it, just let it happen. He's like, I, he said, this, what happened touched me differently. It, it, it hit, all, all of them was tragic. He said, but there's just something about this. Yep. He just says, I, I, I got to say something, but I just want to make sure I'm saying it in the right way. I said, I said, nephew, you you, you'll you be all right. I said, just let your heart speak and you'll be fine. And uh, he called me, he texted me, but he called me back. He said, uh, I wrote some things down, kind of rough estimate, rough draft of what I wanted to say. Tell me what you think. I read over it, read over it a couple he of times. He sent it to you. He sent, he sent me, not, not, the entire, not the entire piece, but kind of rough draft of kind of where he wanted to go with this. Mm. I gave him the thumbs up. I gave him the prayer in hand. Okay. And I agree with him, Skip. This seems so different. This seemed like this is this was the event that's going to finally get us to to have a, a line of communication, and things are going to change. I really believe things are going to change this time. Maybe maybe I'm I'm. Oh, how about this, Skip? I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay. More optimistic than I've been in a very long time. But to back to Vaughn's piece, Skip, Vaughn doesn't do a whole lot of talking. That's not, you know, he, you know, uh, and I've talked to him a little, uh, uh, a little bit when I would go back there and I would talk to him and he would ask me, you know, to be a Bronco and to be a leader and, and to, be, to, be, to be in the community. It's like, what, what does he need to do and how does he need to handle himself? Mm -hmm. Vaughn has matured an unbelievable skip. He's come a very, very long way. But where he was in the beginning to where he is now is a complete 180. Mm. And to have him speak on an issue and have him lead the protest and to have him to be so actively involved, I'm very proud of what he's become. Mm. But Skip, this is 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 this is him. I, I had I didn't weigh in, I didn't, I didn't chime in or any, I didn't say anything. I just listened. And I just gave him some advice of how he should go about it. And what mm -hmm. you see, I, I recommend you read the article no. because this is, this is from Bob Miller's heart. Mm. So here's what got me. When I was on ESPN back 2011, 2012, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. a couple times we had Vaughn on the show. Mm -hmm. It was no good. Mm -hmm. It was pulling teeth. He very shy. He very tried and tried. <laughs> yeah. How about this? And you reach over there and you try over here. It's like, ah, <laughs> ah, give us something. Give us just a little nugget of something. <laughs> nope, nothing. Closed up. Uh -huh. All cliches. Couldn't remember a thing he said. We're trying and trying. And finally, you just give up and say, thank you very much. Yeah. Next. Right. When I read this last night, I said, <laughs> this came from him? I did not know he had that in him. Mm -hmm. Von Miller has writing talent. Yeah. I know he's written poetry. Mm -hmm. This is prose, and it is beautiful, and it is powerful, mm -hmm. and it's insightful, and it's hopeful, which yeah. I appreciated. Yeah. It's hopeful in the end. It's not doom and gloom. Right. It it gave me some heart that that I needed because we go back and forth. Feels like a tipping point. It does. Feels like a turning point. It really, it really Feels does. like yeah. a watershed moment in the history, not just of the country, maybe of the world, right. but certainly of our country. Because it's forced, uh, it's forced other countries to address their issues on racism. Correct. You hear London, you hear Australia, Correct. you hear the Netherlands, you hear all these other countries say, you know what? It's just not in America. It's here also that the darker race people uh, uh, experience racism. Right. So it's forced the world to look at its yeah. own behavior. Right. It took 
a video of a white cop in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yes. Arrogantly and smugly, basically executing a black man mm -hmm. in broad daylight. Yep. It took that mm -hmm. for everybody to sit back and say, that can't happen again. That's enough. Mm -hmm. So I'll speak for the white community, and I'm probably stereotyping here, but when Trayvon Martin happened and Eric Garner happened and Michael Brown, we could go on. When all those things happened, to me, the, the general conclusion of the white community was, oh, that's too bad. Right. Next, you know, like, right. next, mm -hmm. okay. You took it one way, the white community is like, oh, that's, that's mm -hmm. too bad, Shannon. Right. Okay, well, what else do I have to do today? Right. Then that happened, and the white community suddenly said, my God, seriously? Mm -hmm. That can never happen again. Right. So I appreciated that Vaughn pointed out that, this feels different because the protesters, many of the protesters, are not black, said Vaughn Miller. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. First thing I said to you going back two weeks ago yeah. was, Shannon, <laughs> I'm, I'm just eye testing my TV, but I'm saying, wow, mm -hmm. this, is, this, this is shocking. This is pleasantly surprising to the point of shocking. Right. It looks like these are Southern California protests. It looks like they might even be a little wider than black. Right. Good. Yep. Now, they're young white for the most part. Right. But it's showing you there's this generation of white kids, and they're saying, this, is, this can't happen again. Right. And as you know, they're going to have children pretty soon, mm -hmm. and they're going to teach their children correctly. Yes. And, and maybe slowly but surely you can weed out some of the races, right. some of it. Some of it's in place right now, and so it's hard to prevent going forward. Right. But at least the racists in place right now, have they had their eyes and their ears opened a little bit? Right. Maybe, because before, all these, these murders of black men and women, unarmed black men and women by white cops, just went in one eye and out the other for the most part. Right. But to Vaughn's point, maybe this is different. It feels different, and, and you've said a dozen times over the last couple of weeks, yeah, we, well, it's, you'll believe it when you see it. Yes, yes. But everybody is now ripe for change. Yes. Everybody's open to change. Mm -hmm. Everybody is embracing, we got to get this right, and we have to reform, reform, change, right. change. Right. Right? The system needs to be dismantled. The institutions that harbor this needs to be dismantled. And that, that you know, if people say, well, defund the, uh, the police officer, well, when this look at it, it's a tax cut. Like when they defund the education skill, yeah. it's a tax cut. When they take welfare, when they take uh, food stamps, they, okay. they call it a tax cut. So we're just going to tax cut it. We're going to reform it. We're going to make sure that it's in place and it's, it's the police and protect and serve everyone. And you can't be weaponized. Someone calls a black man angry, all that stuff. You can't come gun drawn. Mm. So no, no, no. There, there's some things that needs to be done from a systemic a, a, a point of view and from an institution because don't think these institutions skip these institutions will build on, on racism mm -hmm. okay piece by piece we're gonna dismantle it piece by piece but i i again i underline the fact there are racist police officers in place right now and it's hard to get them out mm -hmm. it's it's very difficult to change their complete well, skip, mindset. We're gonna get a, see, what you want to do is start a registry. Yes. So now we can have a situation so we don't get you fired over here and then you pop up somewhere else and kill somebody okay. and what we didn't know. No, Skip, it's just like if you, get, if you get arrested, you go to jail, guess what they do? They take DNA. They take fingerprints. You in the reg registry. Okay. APHIS, the data bank. Yep. So we're going to have a data bank. Where you bums? You do that stuff over there in Minneapolis or Chicago or Detroit yeah. or even a small rural town. Mm -hmm. Nah, you going to the data bank, bro. We're going to know where you will. We're going to be able to track you. Mm. Okay. So. Because the, the, the guy that killed, the guy that killed George Skip, how do you get convicted seven times? How do you have 16 citations? 16. 16. <laughs> and they still hired him. And then you see uh, uh, the, the police officers in Buffalo that shoved the old man down. Yeah. And then you get the police union uh, chief in Florida talking about we'll hire you. You see? By and the way, they shoved down a 75-year-old white man. Yeah. Yes. And then you got somebody spewing talking about he was a provocateur. Mm. And he they didn't really shove him that hard. So what, what we doing about that blood that's spilling out the man's head? He cracked his head open on the So what are we gonna do about that? Mm -hmm. Maybe that was tomato paste. But. Yeah. I don't know. 
So I want to say bravo to Vaughn. Yes. And I want to say bravo to Unk for encouraging Vaughn. <laughs> you, you were his muse on this, right? I, but, you were his editor. Skip, it's funny that you say that because when I first time I met him, he barely said anything. Can you skip? You know, hey, I'm back home in Denver. I'm, I'm, a, I'm 100 miles an hour. They've heard all the stories. Uh, Steve Antonopoulos, he just retired. He's been there 40 years. They've heard, and, and uh, an equipment guy, they've been there. So they know me. They know my personality. So, and, and Kube, as a matter of fact, Kube was the head coach. Kubiak. So, yeah, Gabe Kubiak. So everybody knew me. And I'm, you know, I'm talking and he, how you doing, Mr. Sharp? Man, you better not call me no me. You better call me Shannon. Mm. So to see this, I agree with you, Skip, to see that. But when he's talking to me, I'm like, is this, is this, really, is this really you? Yeah. Is it really you? Because uh, I don't get that from you. But to, 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 to feel the passion in his voice. Mm -hmm. To, to hear it just, I said, okay, this is going to be good. And he wrote something earlier, and the Broncos posted it on their website. I think the Post mm. carried it also. But this is a different bond. This is not the bond of 2011, 2012. Yep. This is a new, this is a, a grown, mature, awoke yep. young man. Well, I hope this is a new day. It is. I hope, yeah. I hope so, too. Skip, I'm cautiously mm -hmm. optimistic. Good. I'm cautiously optimistic. Well said, Vaughn. And Shannon, lesson learned. Just answer your phone. No, 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 no. Don't call on. me. You better have that number. A lot of people have stuff to say. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed. Or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.